Hey everybody, this is Brian at Obedia, and today I'm going to show you some of the cool new software synthesizers and effects available to you in Steinberg's brand new Cubase 6.5 digital audio workstation. This is the latest and greatest version. A lot of things uh, in this version that people have been anticipating, and this is an exclusive video from us here at Obedia for you guys so that you can check out these brand new features. So let's dive in and I'll start showing them to you. One of the first uh, great new virtual instruments available in Cubase 6.5 is the awesome Retrolog Analog Virtual Synthesizer. Uh, it's a virtual synthesizer, of course, but made to closely model analog technology. So if you're used to maybe Roland Juno 6s, Yamaha synths, synths such as uh, those types, you're gonna wanna check out Retrolog. Uh, it's a pretty straightforward synthesizer. It features two oscillators. It's a two oscillator synth. Uh, the oscillators are available, of course, here on the left-hand side of the synth. Very easy to operate. You can simply turn one on or off by making use of the small slider right here. And then you can make uh, choices as to the octave settings that you would like to make for each of your oscillators change the fine and coarse tuning and change the wave type for each of these oscillators. So real easy to operate. The oscillators, of course, will work in conjunction uh, with the oscillator mix section here in the middle and, of course, the filter section, uh, which features 12 different filter types. So you have a lot of different filters to be able to choose from in Retrolog, uh, which is really, really useful if you like to get very in-depth with your sound design when you're using uh, virtual analog synthesis. There's, of course, an amplifier section, and you've also got some effects here uh, to be able to choose a number of different effects with modulation and delay, of course, and a very cool modulation matrix at the bottom of the synth right here along with your LFO. The modulation matrix is very cool because what this will allow you to do is cause for basically different parts of the synth to control other parts of the synth. So in the case of uh, what I have going on right here on just this default, or one of these default patches that are available in Retrolog, um, because there's 300 different presets pre-designed for Retrolog, uh, what I have going on here is the LFO uh, 1 setting is actually modulating a specific destination. In this case, it's modulation, modulating the uh, oscillator one shape. So you can control and modulate and change different parts of your sound by making use of the modulation matrix. So this is, again, really useful for those of you who like to get nice and in-depth with your sound design. So uh, let me just go ahead and show you guys some of the sounds here in Retrolog so you can check it out. I've got a patch preloaded here. Got kind of a nice analog dark sound to it. Let's open up a pad. Kind of an 80s synth sound going on there. So there's a lot of really cool sounds to choose from, all pre designed for Retrolog. <laughs> And again, I'm making use here of only Retrolog. I don't have any uh, insert FX going on or anything like that. So all the effects that you are hearing are actually built into Retrolog. So this is just the synth right here. And I think it sounds pretty great. And uh, again, this is part of the new Cubase 6.5 upgrade coming from Steinberg. So there's Retrolog. Let's talk about another great synth uh, here in Cubase 6.5. Another really cool new synth available in Cubase 6.5 is Pad Shop. And as the name implies, it's very much meant for pads, for uh, slow or quickly evolving ambient textures uh, and synth sounds and various operations such as that. Really good for adding atmosphere to a track, uh, great for soundtrack work, various things like that. Uh, a lot of different controls to make use of on pad shop and uh, you know so you'll definitely want to take a little bit of time to get to know uh, these different controls 
but uh, just kind of a quick overview of what's going on here. This uses an advanced granular synthesis engine uh, in order to give you this uh, really atmospheric sound that comes out of Pad Shop. Let's go ahead and open up a patch here. Very, very atmospheric sound going on here. Now what you're going to notice here in the center of Pad Shop is uh, that you have this waveform display. And the very cool thing about the waveform display here is that this allows us to make use of a number of preset waveforms that come with Pad Shop, which we can load real quickly and easily from the pull-down menu here and cause for the sound to change based on what we've loaded up. So you can see now we have a very different sound going on from what we previously had when I had simply opened up the preset patch that came uh, with Pad Shop here. So uh, this is a really cool way to be able to create your own custom sounds in, uh, in Pad Shop. Now again, there's another modulation matrix here just like in Retrolog. So again, you can cause for different parts of the synth to actually control uh, some of the sound. So in this case, the modulation wheel is actually controlling the grain length. So let's see what that sounds like. So you can see right there, I'm getting a different sound because I'm actually changing the grain length by making use of my modulation wheel on my keyboard as I'm playing Pad Shop. So again, really, really good for atmospheric, in some case kind of creepy sounds, but also really useful for uh, layering in some nice effect into a track. Uh, there's also a step modulator available in Pad Shop and an FX section. Of course, we, all, we have two LFOs available to us. Our amplifier has our basic uh, attack, decay, sustain, and release controls. We have pitch control, we have filter control, and of course in the primary section here of Pad Shop, we have access to all of the various effects which are actually going to let us really tune in our sound by making use of the various operations which we have in Pad Shop. And there's over 400 presets available for Pad Shop as well, which is really cool. So you probably won't have to spend a whole lot of time designing sounds. So I really dig it. You know, it's got a lot going on and it's kind of nice to have a virtual synth that is just dedicated to pads because typically pads are kind of left out of most sound design. They're kind of an afterthought and they usually are only made by simply changing the attack settings to a preset which was already for bass or lead or something like that. In this case, Pad Shop actually focuses really heavily on making use of sounds which are directly geared towards the pad sound. So really, really useful and very easy to make use of. Uh, let's show you guys some of the other cool effects that we have access to in Cubase 6.5. Now you'll notice, of course, that I have an audio track here in uh, my project I'm working with in Cubase 6.5. These new effects are not only restricted to virtual synthesizers in Cubase 6.5. We also have a couple great new uh, VST effects available to us. Go ahead and show those to you. The first one of those is the brand new DJ EQ. So I'm going to click on an open effect slot here, go to EQ and select DJ EQ. Now the DJ EQ as its name implies is very much meant uh, specifically for use in a DJ type of situation. So it, uh, it gives you quick access to three different kill switches uh, that DJs typically make use of, which is a low kill, a mid kill, and a high kill. So you can quickly access these, of course, by just clicking on one of the buttons here in the interface. You can also grab on to one of the sliders here, uh, one of the nodes 
inside of the interface for the DJ EQ and actively control your sound. So let's just show you guys what this sounds like right now. We'll go ahead and just bring these back to a relatively normal state and we'll start playing. So you can see it's pretty powerful, you know, and just using these kill switches is really quickly and easily adjusting the sound of my track. So this is just really, really useful, I think, for DJs, but also definitely if you're mixing and EQing and you just want to really quickly do a quick low cut on a track or something like that, you could just load up DJ EQ and just real quickly cut out uh, any specific frequency that you're looking for within the lows the mids the highs just cut it out real quickly really good for a b comparison and a lot of control like that so uh, that is one of the brand new effects let's also take a look at uh, the brand new morph filter i'm going to click here go to filter and select morph filter now the morph filter is very much, it reminds me a lot of uh, XY pad controllers that I've made use of on various synthesizers. And um, that is because it seems very simple in its general interface, but in practice, it definitely has a lot of very cool applications. So let's play back. I'll just show you what it sounds like and kind of what it does. <laughs> So you can see, essentially, this is a really great effect. Again, this is something that would be really, really cool in a DJ situation, um, because what this essentially gives you is a group of classic low, high, and bandpass resonant filters. And all of these filters are able to be kind of mashed up against each other as you start to make changes to the graphical interface that you have right here in more filter. So. If you were to map this, of course, to some form of a MIDI controller, this would be incredibly fun, especially if you're a DJ or you do a live mix of electronic music or something like that. Really very cool for being able to just quickly and easily take your sound and change it and give it a whole new depth. And then, of course, make use also of some of the other presets that you have here for real quickly and easily cutting out certain frequencies or amplifying some various things like that. So really very useful, again, probably for DJs and producers, but I could see usage for this as well, just as an effect in an everyday studio recording situation. So those are two really cool, useful, useful effects in Cubase 6.5. We've talked about the two brand new virtual synthesizers, but we've got one new great thing that we can talk about. And that is uh, some great new additions to the VST amp rack. And let's show that to you guys. I'll just go ahead and load the VST amp rack here on my audio track. I'm going to go to distortion in an empty slot and scroll down and select VST amp rack. So this is the latest iteration of Cubase's VST amp rack and uh, gives you a very large collection of guitar tone sounds, which is really important for guitars, of course, because you know it's important when you're a guitarist to be able to find your own sound. That can be hard to do when you're making use of virtual guitar synths and amp sims sometimes, but the VST Amp Rack has worked very hard to make use of a number of different amplifier types. So as you scroll through the amplifier section here, you can choose from a number of different amp types then you can choose a number of cabinet types, which is really useful. You have 4x12s, uh, single 12-inch cabinets, 2x12s, uh, no cabinet if you want to go directly out of the head. Uh, you can also link your amp and cab choice as well. So each of these different cabs is going to have a different sound. Then you can make use of post effects, and you can also change the microphone position. And of course, there's a number 
of presets available for you as you scroll through and make changes here in the VST amp rack. So depending on how you want your sound to actually sound, you can actually dial in your mix specifically by making use of different post effects, microphone position, uh, and of course, you can also make use of final master effects. You have an equalizer or tuner available. You also have pre-effects if you decide to make use of pre-effects. There's a lot of great things available to you in the VST amp rack, uh, all of which are brand new in Cubase 6.5. There's also a new maximizer and a, and a limiter stop box. Uh, there's some new input and output level meters. And there are, of course, as I say, new presets. There's 50 new signature and classic presets all available in VST amp rack, which is really, really useful. So a lot of really cool ways to dial in your guitar tone sound the way that you want it to sound, but without having to carry around all the bulky uh, equipment that usually comes with getting the guitar tone sound that you're looking for. So there you go, guys. That's just a quick overview of many of the brand new sounds, uh, effects, and instruments all available to you in Cubase 6.5 from Steinberg. Uh, check out our other videos to find out some more information about the other brand new features in Cubase 6.5. Of course, if you are a current Cubase user, you can upgrade to Cubase 6.5 now. If you are not a Cubase user at this time, you can go and find out about picking up Cubase 6.5 from Steinberg or a music retailer near you. So I hope you guys found this useful and cool. Uh, hit me up with questions if you have any. My email is brian at obedia.com. You can get me on Twitter at twitter.com forward slash obedia tutor. And of course, on Facebook at facebook.com forward slash obedia tutor. Give us a call and talk to us about how you can get the most out of your digital audio hardware and software, which is what we do best here at Obedia. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I will see you next time. Take care.